Hello everyone and happy Halloween. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Which is exactly the thing that you need. An awesome brony reviewer, Silver Quill. Coffee. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, we start re- we start re- great right away because we're going to be reviewing episode 21 of season 5 overall episode 112 titled Scaremaster written by Natasha Levinger and you might guys might be wondering but guys what are you doing reviewing episode 21 when the last episode you reviewed was episode 15 well there is this one thing called uh iTunes and it derped pretty badly, releasing the episode for the 31st of October on the 21st of September. And that's why we are going to talk about this one, because it's Halloween, it's a Halloween episode, it's going back to Nightmare Night, and we are going to talk about this episode. Because, I mean, come on, we, we cannot not talk about this one, we need to talk about this one. So, uh, the story of this episode in particular, Fluttershy is giving herself in her cottage, to pass the night of Nightmare Night, as she always does every year. But this year, she decides to step out and face the face her fears and confront the festivity. What follows is just... I'm not going to say anything, because the less you know about this episode, the better. So if you haven't watched it, I tell you, there's going to be spoilers from minute one. But uh, let, let's do let's do first impressions right away. So, um, guys, what, what did you think of this episode? What, what do you make of it? With Fluttershy, so often the criticism is, oh, she's such a coward. She never uh, changes. She never grows. Everything she learns, she forgets in the next episode. <laughs> so so on and so forth. Then they introduce the concept of baby steps, which they, which they invoke in this episode. And I really enjoy this. This is Fluttershy stepping out and tackling probably the most uncomfortable zone she's been in thus far. Maybe even more than uh, singing in front of a crowd. Because this is a night intended to scare you. Now, granted, they play it up really far. I mean, I, I kind of marvel when she starts being afraid someone will actually physically attack her. But at the end, we get to see her try, fail, try again. And perhaps the greatest moment is when she asserts her sense of self. And that means a lot, uh, that this is not simply go with the group. More on that when we actually talk about the episode. But all in all, this is one of the better Fluttershy episodes. It's not quite Hurricane Fluttershy levels, but it, it is wonderful. My first impressions of this one. How the hell did iTunes derp? <laughs> I... <laughs> that is my first impression. How you know what? Did... I, I think I think the person that managed to leak the the uh Valentine's Day episode uh-huh. ahead of time two years no wow three years ago already they never fired that person and he kept working on uh, he kept working at iTunes because this is this that wasn't the first time it, the 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 last time it happened mm-hmm. and it, it this one is not going to be the last time it happened either <laughs> like half of season 3 got leaked out of iTunes <laughs> Well, I think the only I think the only episode of season three that didn't got leaked was actually the season finale. <laughs> Every other wow. episode got leaked out ahead of time. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Oh god, it was ridiculous. Yeah, but, oh, but honestly, what do you think of this episode? <laughs> but honestly, I like I I love it. I love this episode. This, this episode was just fun. It was silly in a few places where it meant to, it was where it was meant to be silly it was fun where it was meant to be fun and overall this episode was just fun like there's nothing bad about it there's there's no slow tempo there's no moments where you felt bored there's there's nothing that makes you want to go to sleep as per se, when you get really bored. It, it was just fun. It was just fun. And I do like how Fluttershy here develops. She started out scared and slowly on baby steps, baby steps. I am very happy that they managed to make an episode that has the same amount of quality and perhaps in many parts much better quality than uh, Luna Eclipse. Um, I also like that they didn't go with the same idea. 
the whole, you know, ah, oh, let's use Nightmare Night as as a way to bring back Princess Luna or something. No, they did something new with it. And something that we didn't see in the previous episode. Like, this is the first time that we see Rarity on a Nightmare 9 episode. Mm -hmm. So that makes me very happy. We can see the costumes that she has designed and all that. That's really cool. Uh, they don't repeat the costumes. They are all very unique, very neat. And I love the theme. And I also, I especially love the ending. The, the ending we're gonna get to it when we get to it. But yeah, I, th I think this is probably one of the better episodes of season five. And a very worthy compliment to Luna Eclipsed. Like it very much. I don't know what else to say that you guys haven't said already. <laughs> we're gonna now start talking about the episode. Uh, so we're gonna spoil the the horse apples out of it. So if you yeah. guys haven't watched it yet, definitely don't watch this review. I mean, you might be watching this when the episode just got released. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's very likely that you may not have watched it on iTunes. So yeah. if you haven't watched it, wait, watch it, then come back and listen to us. But right now we're going to spoil everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I mean yes. everything. We're going to talk in detail about everything about this one. So. If you're still listening to this part here and still haven't watched the show, well, now is your time to wait until the 31st of October, where the episode officially launched on the Hub. But if you don't really care or have seen it, well, join us now. Mm -hmm. Join us. One, One of us. us. One the of greater us. good. <laughs> Sorry. Well, okay, so we start the episode inside uh, Fluttershy's, I almost say Twilight, inside Fluttershy's cottage, and she's preparing for Nightmare Night. She's covering all the windows, she's closing all of them with the help of her pet spider. The, the same we saw from Mod Pie. Fuzzy Lady. Oh, is she? <laughs> yep, that's the, that's, I think that's the same model of spider from Mod Pie. So, you know, even despite those red eyes and those, uh, I don't know what those pincer-like jaws are called. Uh, it's an adorable little friendly guy. I think those are called mandibles. Ah. <laughs> I do agree, though. They managed to make a spider likable. That is so <laughs> weird. I, I, that goes for the design team of this show. They managed to make a spider cute. How dare you? I have to watch Lord of the Rings seven times in a row now to make <laughs> spiders look look scary again. <laughs> and then there's, and then I'm pretty sure that's the same bear that Fluttershy oh, yeah, that's massaged its, its neck. Yeah, that's Harry. And, and, yeah, that's, and it's Hugs Harry Burger. from season, it's Harry from season one, remember? No, two. No, no, from season one. He gets introduced in the, in the party of one episode. Really? Oh, where, oh, yeah, where, yeah. where they go bear sit, they go sit on the <gasps> oh, bears. Oh, yeah, home. yeah, yeah. Yeah. We need to, uh, we need to, uh, housewarm, uh, someone's house. Who's Harry? We don't, I don't know anyone named Harry. He's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I happen to be a bear called Harry in this show. <laughs> wow, that, wow. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I love Harry. Uh, and, and, and keep an eye on this cast of div different creatures because they are going to have an impact in the end of the episode. Well, it's going to be relevant. I have to say something. After five years of watching this show and now realizing that my mind is blown. This is a, this is a spot on reaction. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, we broke Norman. Oh, wow. But, oh, but here's the thing. I may have just spotted Fluttershy's mother. Who? Uh, uh in the background, there's a portrait of uh, a pink violet Pegasus with very similar eyes and a mane. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, that's actually very reminiscent of uh, Starlight Glimmer, I think. Really? No. She does look a lot like Starlight, Glim Starlight Glimmer's uh, color scheme, but it has Fluttershy eyes. You're right. Hmm. And wings. Where is and it? wings. Where is it? Uh, it's on see. the wiki page on the third picture. Third and fourth picture. Third and fourth picture. Oh, that one. Oh. Oh. So, right? Uh, okay. So, either we've unofficially spotted Fluttershy's mummy, mm -hmm. or I'm just pulling it out of places best left unmentioned. Oh, it could be <laughs> Fluttershy's sister. Well, uh, we're not getting to siblings this season, it seems. Oh. This season. Mm. Wink, 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 nudge, nudge. Yay. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, nudge. Uh, so, so, but yeah, she's, she's going 
to all of her creator friends, asking them for help, like Fuzzy Legs is closing the window. She asks the birds to alert her in case something scary comes to the cottage. And then she goes to Harry to ask him if, she, uh, if he has prepared her hidey hole, her hidey place under her bed. And am I the only one who wants to get in that hidey hole and never come out? That it looks wow. like, like the cosiest place ever. All I'm saying is, uh, innuendo. Ha cha. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But it looks, that looks like a comfortable place, man. Like, you know when you're a kid, you read books under the sheets and have your flashlights on? Like, that, that looks fun. Well, it's comfortable. It's a, it, oftentimes introverted people prefer that sense of mm, privacy and a smaller space, provided you're not claustrophobic, can offer that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a nice little feel- bite away. Filled with cushions and like, uh, bed sheets on the, on the walls and all that. It's like, ah, uh, can I go there now? I don't want to keep reviewing the, the episode. I want to go one of those hiding oh, no, places. Wait. Let me ruin that moment for you guys. Let me ruin that moment for you guys. Okay. Angel Bunny. Ah, uh, yes. Uh-oh. If there's, if there's ever a way to ruin a perfect setup, it's Angel frickin' Bunny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we, we should throw all the rocks at Angel Bunny now, because I want to, I, I, by the end of the review, I want to talk about how, what, how, what an important character Angel is in Fluttershy's life. But I'm not going to go there yet. I want to go there at the end of the, of the review. Actually, I'd like to talk more about what an important ingredient he'd be in Rabbit Stew. Mmm, that'll be delicious. Have you ever tried Rabbit Burger? That'll be nice. I'm tempted. Mmm. I'm tempted. And anyway, let's not direct our hatred towards Angel yet. Let's let's uh let, let's move on because well, the thing is that if it wasn't for Angel, we wouldn't have an episode. First of all, <laughs> so, oh no, you know what? I'm not gonna give him a free pass based on that. Angel, you villain! <laughs> now that Diamond Tiara is being redeemed, you are the villain. Yes, <laughs> the, the recurring villain in this show. <laughs> the, ti- the Titanic source of evil that must be purged from this world. Yes. Angel. Angel is out of carrots. He doesn't have any food to pass nightmare night. So he sends Fluttershy to town to get some food for him. And that's what starts the episode. Fluttershy starts walking about in town. Everybody is celebrating the, the, the festivities. And she's just scared about everything. And um, some fairly uh, morbid decorations. We, we have a glimpse to what is considered a canon version of a pony skeleton. <laughs> yeah. Unicorn skeleton. So we know that the unicorn horn is actually part of the head. So when uh, when people try to equate uh, the a long unicorn horn with a certain uh, boner... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the wings, man. That's for the wings. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> And, uh, there is a very, in- th- there is a very neat Easter egg that I just noticed here looking at the wiki. When Fluttershy runs away, scared of the little children with buck teeth, the l- puff of smoke that she leaves behind, it's shaped like a chicken. <laughs> Should have been shaped like Scootaloo. <laughs> right, so That's again. right, I went there. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, Bruce Kids. <laughs> But yeah, in the process of running away or trying to escape, she runs into Big Mac and Granny Smith, who are preparing some haystack for the corn maze that they are preparing on Street Apple Lakers. And Granny Smith does a wonderful job at trying to uh, uh, up the ante from like, oh look, Angel is such a such a jerk. Granny Smith can be an even bigger bigger jerk. <laughs> really? Well, it's kind of funny. Angel is acting out of pure selfishness. When I see Granny, she's getting too swept up in the festivities. She forgets who she's talking to. But I will say, uh, I, I just linked you guys the image, but it's also on the, the wiki gallery. There's a scene where all three characters, Fluttershy and Granny are talking, and Big Mac is just watching from the side. If you follow his, the, his angle and line of sight in relation to Fluttershy... <laughs> oh, you, no. He's, he remembers Philly Vanilli. Oh, wow. and I think mm. I think he's grown an appreciation. I really oh yeah, he's grown an appreciation in a few inches. More. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I ship it, so you know. Uh, yeah, of course, brother Mark. Oh um, my gosh, so many not a words. But yeah, Granny Smith talks about the about the mummy. That is in the maze and the cracking sounds of bones and the things, the, the, the grapes holding from, from strings that could be eyeballs <laughs> or not. 
And uh, keep that in mind because that is going to be relevant. But she manages to scare Fluttershy away. And in typical horror movie heroine slash victim, she runs away to the safest place in the entire town, of course, the evil Overlord castle. I mean, the <laughs> Twilight Sparkles castle. I have to and, say something. Yeah. This is a scary scene. This is a scary scene. What? It's a scary scene, but it's perfect. Didn't you say, Silver, in one of your videos that this castle is the color scheme of an evil overlord. Well, there you go. Yes, it is. It is. And it's big. It's isolated. It's poorly lit. It is... First off, I guess this is the one night where this castle would fit perfectly with the town. <laughs> Invite everyone to go on the scary castle quest. Because this show was produced before you made that comment, but I think they are making they are paying attention to your criticism retroactively. Given some of what's happened lately, I've gotten very lucky in predicting certain things. <laughs> Or at least invoking them. <laughs> I've invoked them. You have them. the power. <laughs> I I am lucky. I am <laughs> dang lucky. We just need a pony with a whip and a boomerang cross. That's about it. I I think uh, I think you should just stop with the whip man. I, I I was going for Chief Kinky in this episode, but you you sir, you yeah. stepped up a notch. Hey, yeah, you put it up. Uh, you put it up several notches. <laughs> you you, you yeah. kinky devil. I, Heidi Hall, Big Mac, and now the whip. What are you trying to imply here? <laughs> and, and, oh. and unicorn bone. And unicorn okay, bone, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> this is Halloween, not Valentine. Well, okay. Well, hey, who oh, says so. that there is nothing kinky going on Halloween? Hey, have you seen the costumes they sell to women now? <laughs> Carrying on. Yeah, I mean the only the only costume that is not sexy is frog. I mean, how how I, dare you not make a sexy frog costume? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the shy enters to the castle. Yeah, she and... enters the castle, and she finds that Spike has finally achieved his role as minion and turned into Igor. <laughs> Igor, actually, he's like a two-headed dragon. But my God, Spike! Spike you this scene. Oh, Spike, you magnificent dragon. I didn't know that. Why? He's the one who says to Fluttershy, everyone will be happy to include you. They'd be so glad to have you part of this. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, this is where Spike is at his best. He's not really suited to carry an episode because, well, I'm, I'm going to go on at length about this when I talk about Princess Spike again. But... His role is a supporter. If he has to carry an episode on his own, he doesn't have his own goal or uh, or even personal obstacles. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes the writing suffers. Here, he's the voice to help another character, to get her included. Uh, and he's being so honest and sincere. How can you not love him for saying this? I absolutely adore Spike in this moment. Yeah, I agree. Having Spike there telling... Fluttershy, hey, glad you're here. Everyone else would be happy. And having Fluttershy say no is just uh, soul crushing. Well, but we get there, and uh, and it's just a, it's just a nice scene for Spike. And when oftentimes he is forgotten or doesn't get to put forth his best self, there are scenes like this that reaffirm. Yeah, it's, true that, it, it's true usually that. A, a shame that we cannot have more moments like this. But I guess. If we hadn't had all those other moments, we wouldn't be able to appreciate these kind of moments. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm very glad when they, when they give, uh, when they give Spike such a, such a good piece of writing that they make him look so much, uh, so much better than how he usually is. <clears throat> True. But you know what? I, I, for costume, Spike is really unimaginative. Really? Uh, well, last year he was a dra well, last nightmare night he was a dragon. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think a two-headed dragon is an improvement. <laughs> well, still a dragon. Come yes, on. He's the you you think that he will be the one who'd be dying to get a costume from from Rarity, but he's doing it himself. Mm, true effort. That's a play. That's an A plus. So that's still good. Maybe mm. he's maybe he's trying to prove to Rarity he can sew too. Or maybe he thinks that Rarity will be better off just designing for ponies because that's the thing that she does. And he'd rather save her some time and do the costume himself. 
Uh, either way, Spike does come off very, very likable in this episode. Not, not as a jerk or anything, but he does come off as a very likable character. Yep. So we cut to the main six telling horror stories at the, at the light of, uh, of a candle. And is it just me or is Pinkie Pie telling everybody it by Stephen King? The balloons had never been inflated. <laughs> they all flew out here. How close are they from starting to talk about the long gunman and the dark tower and the crimson king realm and whatever good grief is Stephen King on drugs when he writes things? But yeah, what I I love this little scene. Going back to to that little uh, little excerpt from. I will remember. Look before you uh, look before you sleep. That was fun, and <laughs> that whole banter there that that was that's fun. And having kind of I don't know if it's a sleepover party or just ghost story party, whatever it is, and having it in a castle like that, like it's really fun. No, no, all you need is sleeping bags all over the place, and you have a party. Not just the castle, but the castle library. So it's it is thematic to that. I mean, and Twilight is having the Biggest fun right there. So the ghost storytelling is interrupted with uh, Fluttershy arriving and telling everyone that she's going to be spending Nightmare Night with them. Or trying to at least. Or at least try to. No more baby steps. She's taking a big step. And everyone is really supportive. And really proud of her. Yeah, and they make a call back to <laughs> Philly Vanilli. The whole, what if I didn't try singing? I, I, I wouldn't have found out that I liked it so much. Which is technically backwards. She knew she loved it, but she didn't want to sing in first. Blah, blah, blah. Splitting hairs. Yeah, I, I think what she meant to say was singing in public. Yeah. So, it, but this is a great scene. It's great how everyone is so supportive. Granted, Rainbow will, of course, be the voice of doubt, really saying what everyone is thinking. Yeah, but that's just Rainbow. It, so but yeah, remember, exactly. she's the element of loyalty. No <laughs> Is she loyalty she's, or honesty? We still don't know. She's the, she's the element of bluntness. <laughs> so true. she's a blunt. She, she's a blunt instrument to be wielded to smash thine foes and decimate one's ego. She's the element of having no tact whatsoever. But honestly, like the main six, after they support, they say uh, "hurrah, yay!" just to be in support of Fluttershy. And Fluttershy ducks away because she's scared. Yeah, this this starts to go into a scene that how to describe this? When Fluttershy is trying out of costumes, this is. Jumping ahead a little because we are, I'm skipping the Cutie Mark Crusader's vandalism. <laughs> I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about the Cutie Mark Crusaders, uh, but go ahead, go ahead, Silver. And then we'll, well go no, back I, to the CMCs. Well, I, I do want to, I, I bet I can anticipate. Thank goodness they were wearing costumes. Yes! Yes! Am I not? Yeah! Yes! <laughs> Imagine if they, because this is like what, six episodes before they yeah. get their Cutie Marks or something like that? <laughs> Imagine if they weren't wearing anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my god! <laughs> Which, could you just imagine? Could you just imagine if they were, well, wearing a costume that didn't cover their flanks? Oh my god, like, think spoilers. back, think back to that guy working for iTunes. <laughs> oh, Somebody wow. had a heart attack that day. Somebody <laughs> had a cardiac arrest. <laughs> ah! Are they wearing anything? Are they wearing anything? Oh, thank god. God, they're wearing costumes. Oh, wow. <gasps> <laughs> but, but, okay, um, talking about this scene for a bit, like, Rarity's Boutique, oh my god, it looks so good. Like, the, the thing that she plays, like, that Nightmare Moon bat thingy, that's cool. And the CMC's costume, uh, Scootaloo's a Wonderbolt, Apple Bloom is a platypus, and Sweetie Belle is Victorian team dress thingy? She even uh, has the mole on her cheek. Yeah. All I know <laughs> is that Apple Bloom is proof that God has a sense of humor. Just look at the platypus. <laughs> uh, and well, well and a couple of episodes later, we'll see that God does have a sense of humor, Kitty Mark. <clears throat> oh, well. And, and I have to mention the two ponies in front. Oh, yes. Gem and Sailor <laughs> Moon. I know! <laughs> And the funny thing is, she's colored like Princess Twilight, and so the Princess of the Moon. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, but, but let's get. But what, yeah. what are Snips and Snails dressed up in the, as in the background? 
Those are snips and stills? Wow, well, I, I never noticed them. Well, one of them has, uh, yeah, they kind of look like them. But that's neither here nor there, but this is the fun yeah. of a Halloween episode. And God, yeah. all the anime shout outs in this. Oh. Oh wow! Let's get in. Let's get into the boutique. Let's get into the boutique yeah, yeah. and see what does Rarity have to say or what does Rarity have to dress for the Cheyenne. Well, uh, that that's what I originally started about, but got <laughs> sorry, by sorry. all this marvelous. Uh, this is so cool. Fluttershy in narrowing down costumes. Do I need to run away? Will this block my field of vision? Now, I I usually support Fluttershy when when she's nervous or. Awkward in social situations. I empathize with that. But right here, she's talking like people are got ponies are going to physically attack her. And I, I, this is the one moment where I wish someone would say, Fluttershy, this is all pretend. No one is really going to hurt you. Well, <clears throat> Everfree Forest, Plunderbines, mm-hmm. Chimera, but, uh, we but, also but, have the Manticores, <laughs> we have Giant Dragons, we have the Queen of the Changelings going about on the comics <laughs> and on the TV show, King Sombra, <laughs> then we have Discord, even though he's friends with her. Yo, yo, yo. We're, okay, we're, okay, we're, okay, okay, I'm, I'm making a point here is that in a world where there are monsters abound, I think her points have a very high validity. <laughs> Were any of these characters invited to Nightmare Night? If so, I'd like to talk <laughs> to know, the planning committee. In a in a, in a celebration where ponies dress themselves up as Timberwolves and Changelings, as we see in the beginning of the episode, this is the perfect time of the year for any monster to sneak in and somebody will say, hey, nice costume. And then they reveal to be an actual monster, then they don't have to run away. Funny enough, uh, that gets proven at the end of the episode. <laughs> But then, but then they actually do the bobbing for apples. You know what? This is too much fun. I'm not going to conquer Equestria tonight. Bring forth the candy corn. No, wait, that sucks. Aww. I always wanted to try candy corn. And now I try- oh, no, no, you don't. Aww. No, you don't. Yeah. Aww. But anyway, with Fluttershy here, okay, I, we all understand why her points are valid. Her points are really valid. But come on. This is Halloween or Nightmare Nights, a night where you're supposed to have fun and just go with the flow. I remember watching a YouTube video of a guy scaring some other guy by just standing on a street corner dressing up as Slenderman. Yeah. That's scary and funny. No, no, man. You say it's Nightmare Night. I'm pretty sure there is a Nightmare Night movie directed by John Carpenter, <laughs> And it's all about <laughs> horror and terrible things happening in Nightmare Night. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm not going to let it go. This is actually I like I like Fluttershy's attitude. It's both funny, and it's uh, it. I think it's pretty in character for her. It's like she I is. Don't... Well, she's very scared of this. She has never done something I, like I this know. before, so she's super insecure. You have any idea how many times I have to check my password before getting into a website <laughs> that I don't know? I get yeah, so I mean, paranoid. Here's she, the thing. I mean. Okay, the word for Fluttershy here is she's paranoid. And the thing here is, like, she's taking things up to 11 with how she acts right now. And honestly speaking, it does fit her character well with how insecure she is with everything and how she's afraid of everything. Very, very out of her comfort zone. And mm. they, they they do exploit that, that is true. <clears throat> but I like the way they do that. I mean, it's it's funny. It's funny and endearing at the same time, for me. At yeah, least. but the problem is, it gets tiring really fast. Well, it does get tiring. It's, it's, believe me, the costumes are just the tip of the iceberg. Every, we go through the scene where she's saying, oh, I'm taking all the fun out of this because she can't even eat candy. Yeah. Well, that's the problem there because she, she eats candy all the time. She eats, this is, she just eats. I think that I think that uh what saves that those scenes at least for me is the reactions that everyone else has. I mean is uh, uh, the way that Pinky pushes the bag out of the counter <laughs> just like, with such a straight face. She's like she I don't even know what's going through her mind right now but it's definitely oh no this is so not working. Urge to party rising. <laughs> But but I just have to say that Fluttershy's choice in costume is the little black dress. I just love that. That looks like a cocktail dress in some ways. I know, but here's the thing. Get her a wig and she's Elvira. I I know. Uh, here's the thing. I'm I came from other fandoms where the little black dress is really popular, and just watching her in it is just oh my god. That's just so. Ah! 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Norman has an entire folder of, fr- of Fluttershy wearing that costume. And just that costume. No. Nothing else. No, not yet. And perhaps not, not even the costume. <laughs> oh, not yet. Oh, oh hear that? He, he wants one. Jay, James, are you open for commissions? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, oh, you guys. But no, talking about costumes, we forget, we, we, we're overlooking the main six. Like, Rarity is obviously a mermaid. And the rest of the main six, they're interesting. I do like Rainbow Dash. She dresses as Buzz Lightyear's. Similar oh, right. to Buzz Lightyear. At least an astronaut. Yeah, she's an astronaut. Mm. I was confused. I thought Pinkie Pie was dressed as uh, uh, Twilight Sparkle on that one uh, uh, lollipop chainsaw video game. Oh, you know? no, she doesn't want to dress like that. But I thought but she was. We... <laughs> she looked a lot like her. But we have a team with uh, Applejack. She's trying to hold. She's trying to run the whole gamut of the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you're right. But, In the first Nightmare Night, she was a scarecrow. Now she's the cowardly lion. Oh, so mm-hmm. next she's got to be uh, a Tin Man if they can if they can get to another Nightmare Night. <laughs> oh, they knew that that would be brilliant. Yep, yep. But then that would mean afterwards she'd have to be Dorothy and then Toto. Oh no, she will be Dorothy. She will be Dorothy, and Toto will be uh, uh, Winona. Winona. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I wonder what Twilight is because she She's a looks like a. Why would she? <laughs> Maybe because she likes her brother. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. From an what ancient time. Th- from an ancient time when the royal guard actually did stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we move on to Sugar Cube Corner. I wonder. He, I wonder what's going on in Sugar Cube Corner, really. Like, is the business closed? What What's going on, really? Well, when the whole Maybe. town is selling, is giving away candy for free. You're not going to sell many cupcakes. Yeah, true. Well, but well. Is, it, is it Sugar Cube Corner? Is, no, wait, wait. Yet yeah, it is Sugar Cube Corner. At first, I thought they were in in Pinkie Pie's uh, bedroom, but you can see the counter of Sugar Cube Corner right there. But still, we have a lovely scene of them playing Pin the Horn on Nightmare Moon. That's a new one. Uh, yep, that's the thing. <laughs> I'm just glad that Princess Luna is not here to see this. Oh, did she? She's. I think she's gotten over it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, we, I am pretty we, glad that they are playing this game instead of Pin the Tail on the Pony. I thought that was such a lame game. Didn't they did that in uh, Amending Fences? I think the I think they did. I think it was at least in the background. But at least they have some, you know, one of they they have a few gamuts of games that they're playing from Bob the Bob the Apples and whatnot. And as per usual, Fluttershy is scared that she might drown. Scared she might drown. Scared she might choke on candy. Scared that if she's blindfolded, again, someone will attack her. I, I okay, fine. This is a world populated by monsters, but really. She's usually given them a belly scratch into submission. True. Or that. a stir usually, uh, too. <laughs> and usually, so, unless they are the, 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 the dragon. <laughs> Even then, she gave it a stern talking to. <laughs> Besides, I'm pretty sure you can see a dragon coming from a mile away anyway, because it's, it's a goddamn yeah. dragon. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I don't know. Sp- Again, Spike's not here. Really? I- well, Spike's busy doing other things with other people. He will be I there later. Think. He has no social life. So, no, who knows? Maybe, yeah, if he was playing, if he was watching Hoofball with Big Mac, maybe he's watching horror movies with Big Mac. That, like, probably. No, oh, no, no. He's busy. He's busy. Oh, great! Now I have this image of Spike shoveling in popcorn while Big Mac hides behind the sofa. But these uh, these many failed attempts at trying to celebrate Nightmare Night uh, make Fluttershy feel like she's not really getting into the celebration. And Twilight has a brilliant idea. What if instead of uh, the scares coming to her, what if she is the one causing the scares? Ah. So they uh, they encourage Fluttershy to do some scaring for once. So Fluttershy says, okay, meet me in my cottage in an hour. I will have something set up for you. That's a novel concept, really, because when you think about it, when you when when you are scared, usually you don't know what's coming. You're, well, basically... You don't know what's coming, and the unknown is scary. But when you're doing the scaring, that is something fun. You you can you can participate. Plus, it's also it's also given the introvert the control of the situation, which I think it's kind of a good idea, because when they are in control of of what surrounds them, that kind of like 
boosts her, the, 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 like, it kind of like diminishes their insecurities. At least from the way that they are putting it in this episode. And, well, like you said, Fluttershy says, meet me in my cottage within an hour, and, well, prepare to be scared. Who? <laughs> Who wants to take this one? This is a very interesting scene. How to describe, much to say as the joke gets a little older. <laughs> oh, it starts to grow a little stale, and then, anime ponies! No, I was actually, I, I, I am surprised, Silver, you're not making the most obvious joke in here. What is it? It's a scary tea party. Only scary if Sarah Palin is behind it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you! Uh, I, I took that away okay. from you. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I've moved on to Trump humor. Because <laughs> oh, that always because that always trumps Palin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, oh. running through the gamut. Late guests, no household kitties, uh, no friends beside you. Like, all those things that really are not scary. Until we get those unexpected guests. And, wow, from left to right, we got Sailor Moon. We got Ava Genesis. You, 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 uh, you're Genesis you're going, of course, you... you you otakus and your anime and your stuff. <laughs> Would you, yeah, yeah, can we, can we delay on talking about that for a moment and okay. to, talk about the other, the other quote unquote scares? Because when you think about it, that is, that says more about Fluttershy than you really, than you really think. Well, it just shows her desire to, her greatest fear is letting others down. Uh, to yeah. be a bad host. She is actually a very, well, they say introverts have a much higher sensitivity. They've even measured brain chemical levels to say, uh, to measure response rates, which makes them actually more empathetic, more likely to follow the rules, uh, more likely to express kindness. Uh, which, son of a gun, there's Fluttershy. Yeah. And those but, scares are very grounded in reality. It's like, oh, uh, unexpected guests we have oh no we run out of sugar oh no my friend didn't came because they they didn't care for me or oh my nobody said that my dress was looking pretty they that means they must hate it <laughs> like what? that is so too, that, too real and meanwhile moon dancers off to the side shouted i was doing it before it was cool Either, either that or she is legitimately scared in a corner saying, no, no, it's the birthday party all over again. It's the birthday party all over again. <laughs> Twilight didn't show up because he doesn't care for me. She cannot pass the cucumber oh, sandwiches because she doesn't like me. <laughs> oh, you. Think about that for a second. It's actually somewhat terrifying for, for someone who has so many, so many social insecurities. That, that is true. That is true. But in terms of the tone and the what you call this? Well, yeah, the tone. It's supposed to be Halloween, or well, I'm, there's no or. It is Halloween, and when you talk about scares on Halloween, it's usually going to be Resident Evil, Silent Hill, The Thing, or whatever it is, Aliens or Terminator. It's going to be all those kind of scary, unreal things. Mm. But when you're talking about Oh, you forgot to do your taxes. What are you going to do? Oh, no. Photoshop Don't. just crashed halfway through your project. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> PayPal you deleted didn't. all your financial information. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you have to review Princess Spike. <laughs> uh, did we did that one before? No, no, no. <laughs> Even good. worse. You need to bow. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and Trump's on the ballot. Oh, no. Uh, I'm amazed. I keep baiting you, and you keep picking. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? It's it's the thing right now. But God, the joke's getting old. Even it, now. it is. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. But, still, but yeah. Let's okay. Go. Let's let's talk about those uninvited guests. Let's talk about about the point where I wonder how Japan is going to react when this episode is released. Suko <laughs> kawaii desu. sama. We love you. So you guys have to hold my hand on this one because I have no uh, idea. Well, okay, right, I know the right. Sailor Moon one, but I don't know what the others are. All right, okay, from left to right. So you got uh, who's this? Uh, Usagi Tsukino from Sailor Moon and Ray Ayanare. I uh, well, Ay just Ray Ayanami. Ayanami from Eva. You got Utena Tenjo from Revolution Girl Utena. 
and you got Bruma from Dragon Ball. Well, and you got Rama Satomi from Rama One Half. Well, this proves uh, Fluttershy apparent. confirmed from we Weab- for Weabu Trash. <laughs> yes. And apparently, I'm going to assume that's the female version of Rama, despite the darker hair. I think that's the male version because. Oh yeah, more square nose. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. uh, the shtick with Rama is that if you throw the character in cold water, uh, he turns into a female thanks to a curse. If it's warm water, the character becomes male. A oh, hijinks ensued. That was one confusing and funny cartoon or oh, anime. Really fun. Oh, by the way, the character Shampoo from Ranma One Half was played by Katie Westlock. In in the English dub. Yep, in the Ocean's dub, yes. I actually I could tell by the type of the keyboards we have completely bored uh James. <laughs> oh no, I'm still here. I am actually I... paying attention. I am um... I, but I, I could, just never mind. What? I can feel your seething. These weeaboos, man. These are so <laughs> cool. I'm just yeah, trying to figure the... out this whole thing about drama one half about a guy that changes gender depending on the oh, heat of should, the water. You should try. Like, you should try, man. It's really cool. No, no but you see, every, to... every anime that I have ever watched, uh, starts normal and then it just goes downright weird. The only animes that didn't bother me are the ones that start weird right away. Like, I don't know, uh, Gurren oh, Lagan. And, uh, oh, you're gonna love Ranma if you watch. Yeah, if I guess you that's have it. an interest in it. <laughs> oh, by the way, I need to point something out. The cardboard cutouts here, if you really look at them, they look 3D. They look like they are made on a computer. They look like three di- three three dimensional models. Yes, like the di- like the the timber walls, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Because the way that they're floating around, the way that they're shaped, it's really 3D-ish, which is cool. I think this is the right amount of 3D that you should use in a show like this. Yeah, you're here. But, uh, well, I still like the Timberwolves. I know mm. I know they've drawn some ire, <laughs> but I still like the 3D Timberwolves because they I were re- fluid. I, I was I was surprised because everybody was complaining about the Timberwolves being used uh, in the show. It's like, oh, this use is starting to use three-dimensional models. Um, the giant wind thingy in Hurricane Fluttershy? That was made with 3D. The spinny wheel thingy in Wonderballs Academy, that was also made with computers. Like mm-hmm. the use of CGI in the show is not a new, uh, is not new with the Timberwolves. They just were made more obvious. But then again, the kind of shots they were going for, they needed to be 3D. You cannot animate yeah. that in Flash. Uh, well, you can animate that in Flash, but it will take you forever. Oh, forever! Oh, forever! And with- and with how Flash likes to crash, <laughs> you don't want that. So it's better no, to no. use 3D. Well, so, oh, yeah. has, has has anyone told Twilight that might uh, affect her opinion of him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but honestly speaking, with with all that scariness that Fluttershy is trying to produce, uh, the main her friends don't find it scary, and it's rather disappointing. And actually, it's Fluttershy's worst fear. She has let down her guests. Mm-hmm. The very thing she was saying is so scary is happening, and she loses heart. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's it's hard for Fluttershy to scare her friends. Like, it's she put effort into it. Yeah, Twilight said that she put effort into them. Like, that's cool, but honestly, oh, it's it's heartbreaking to let your friends down just because you couldn't scare them. Like, the things that you're afraid of might not affect the same way as others. Though, can I say just a, li- a little detail? Um, I love the way that Fluttershy bites her lip when she's trying to scare them. Yeah, she's that's, ador- that, that's adorable. That's absolutely adorable. But they decided to give up on, like, Fluttershy trying to get into the spirit of things. And... Mm-hmm. And that's the part where they all walk out of the cottage and they're like, yeah, for a moment we really thought that she had something creative going on. Well, I did she, she tried her best. And she's like, I did try my best. Mm. And nice, of to say it. nice of them to say it within earshot. <laughs> and this is the part where I want to talk about Angel Bunny. Okay. That grin is all you need to confirm, son of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> but Three here's, here's, here is the thing. If it wasn't for Angel, Fluttershy wouldn't try anything in this episode. She wouldn't do anything. Not only we wouldn't have any episode, but she also wouldn't test where her uh, uh her skills go. Because he knows that she's so much better than that. And I like to think as Angel, at least in this episode or, or any other episodes where he's a bit supportive, 
I think Angel is uh, Flutterface's backbone. He is the one that tells her, no, you need to put up with this. You need to conquer your fears. That he's the voice behind, uh, behind her head when she's scared of something to keep going forward. And I like the fact that he's, uh, he started just wanting carrots, but halfway through the episode, like he forgot about that. Like, no, this is not my task right now. Forget the carrots. This is completely different. I need to get these scaredy pants out of the house and try to actually get into the festivities. And I am going to try my hardest. Alternatively, he could just be thinking, I want to scare these sad sex. Here, here's my opportunity. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but then again, that goes in the spirit of the season, right? Yeah, true. But, but that's besides the point. We, we know that. Angel Bunny here wants to help Fluttershy. But let's talk about Angel for a bit because me and Silver have the same opinion that we want to eat roasted rabbits. I I definitely don't. I think that Angel gets a bad rap because of that god-awful putting your hoof down episode that really did a massive disservice to every character involved from Fluttershy to the to Righty and Pinky to, to Angel and even, uh, even Iron Will. Every character in that episode came off terrible. And I think from then on, everybody forgot about all the other times that Angel has actually been somewhat good, somewhat supportive, somewhat... Yeah, but here's the thing, because Angel Bunny, we all know that, yeah, he can be a jerk, but he's one of Fluttershy's bestest friends in terms of animals, not ponies. But yeah, he's always been there, he's always been supportive. And if you read the comics, uh, the Fluttershy Zakura Friends Forever series, he's always been there, like the supportive one. And yeah, Angel Bunny's role in Fluttershy's life has always been, hey, I'm here to help you out. Mm-hmm. But I am going to be a jerk about it. Mm, you know, you have to, okay, I know this is kind of like the end justifies the means kind of thing, but I am very much like that. And I'm, I'm a guy that is very much like that. It's like, yeah, look, the end justifies the, justifies the means. Fluttershy completely trusts Angel on everything. Yeah, and in the end, it turns out to be right. I mean, he didn't do anything to hurt her. And in fact, he did help Fluttershy give the main six a lesson in humility. Because, yes, Dash was being a bit of a jerk, but the rest were not being much better. They were this, They were being dismissive. Saying that every attempt that Fluttershy was trying at being scary was just, oh no, it's fine, you're just being very creative. When in fact, she was just being completely useless. They were not being honest with her. They were withholding information, saving their opinion, because they didn't want to uh, upset her, instead of telling her the truth. Let me back up on Angel for a minute, because early on, season one, he was trying to push her. He, She was absent-minded, and he tried to keep her on track. Uh, get her to meetings on time. Let her know about smoke. You know, he had a stubborn streak. Season two was the start of the transition where he was acting much more abusively. And yes, putting your huff down forever colored the interpretation of Angel. Yes. Th- that was the worst. But then there are times where he locks Fluttershy out of her own home just because he doesn't like the- being poofy. Or he uh, leaves her wandering a castle while he enjoys, sits on a bed and has carrots. For every strength of Angel, there's a very strong selfish side. So it's hard to really nail down, is he doing this for his own entertainment? Is he doing this to help Fluttershy? Is it both? You know, well, everyone everyone wins. Now, her friends, it's true, she's not making anything scary. But they know how easily discouraged she is. Perhaps Angel does occupy that one space where he's the only one who can have that really tough love. But his personality makes it hard to determine his motives. It is true that the, the the rest of the main six, they don't want to tell her anything because of how easily discouraged she is. But Angel is telling her the, that she wasn't trying her best, that she should try harder, that, harder, that she's better than, than this. And he's telling her, like, without saying a word, he's saying more and he's been more supportive and helpful than the rest of the main six are. Because at least he's been honest with her. And it is clear that she's not been discouraged because next scene she goes and she goes all out. She puts something together that will make Vincent Price go green with envy. To me, the hatred towards Angel is kind of like all based on his actions in season two. And to be honest, it's his actions in season two in one episode. 
Because if you remember, he was taking care of Fluttershy on Hurricane Fluttershy, and he was being a very supportive character. At least if he was just, you know, being kind of the coach and brushing her hair. But he was already doing much more than other characters have done with her. Well, the thing is with Angel Bunny here is that he is very supportive of Fluttershy, her caretaker. And to say that he's not caring is not true. But the problem is that he is a very selfish character where he do, he does things to benefit himself and to push himself in a better limelight. So sometimes when you look at certain scenes, like especially the hairbrushing scene, oh, poor Fluttershy, she's really sad and depressed. So yeah, I'm going to help her. But is it because out of caringness or because selfishness? It's, it's one of those scenes. I may be looking at it from another point of view or I'm overthinking it, but honestly speaking, Angel Bunny is really an okay character. It's just that his portrayal of himself is really hard to support. And I do like rabbits too. Oh, you're true that. I, <laughs> you guys, let's, let's I swear. <sighs> let's move on because talking about Angel Bunny is making me hungry. So anyway, <laughs> wow. We move on to the next scene where the main six travels to the apple corn yard barn thingy. The the corn maze, as they say. And oh my, did they get a scare from Granny Spears. Oh, I love that. I love that. I absolutely adore that there is a horse face in this show. <laughs> yes! Kill it with fire. Fun, fun fact, this is not the first time that the horse hit appeared. What? Well, technically second time. Well, yep. yes, because of that. Okay, this is the first time that it appeared as a vector in a photo, uh, and not in a, and not in a photo like it appeared in episode one hundred. That yeah. was a different type of horse face. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we get to see. <laughs> this is cool. Once again, we go to the background ponies because background ponies are cool, and we got to see a uh, Friday the Thirteenth pony. <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth, and then Derpy is best princess. <laughs> yes, that's just so cool. We got to see a lot of funny things, and we got to see Big Mac and Mummy. Ooh. This is this is the absolute best part of the episode, in my opinion. Like the entire episode is great, but this is the mm-hmm. part that makes the episode shine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we we enjoy the show a lot because of how backgrounds are. Like, yay, backgrounds. The references are fast, they're quick, and they're funny. They don't overstay their welcome, and they don't exploit them. That's that's cool. I like that. When they don't run a joke into the dirt. Also, that corn maze looks awesome. Makes me want to build one in Minecraft. Knowing how Americans are with corn maze, when they get lost, they try to burn it down and call the cops. Uh, yeah, the police reports listed no suspected arson. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> but as they are walking through the maze, they encounter every single thing that Granny Smith was talking about. They encounter the mummy mm-hmm. eating. They, they, that happens to be Big Mac not doing a very good job. <laughs> Poor guy hasn't gotten over the whole Sister Hoof's uh, incident. Oh, uh, he, does, he does fine. He's just he's, he's a big teddy bear at the end of the day. He's a super big teddy bear. He's so he's huggable. Then they are uh, walking through the maze and then they start uh, hearing crackling sounds. They're like, "Oh no, that's bones!" And Rainbow Dash, as always, is she's like more like dry sticks painted white. Like, <laughs> she's the type uh, of she's the type of person that you're watching a movie and she's like, "I can see the wires." Yeah, <laughs> Look at that, the mask is coming off. I can see the blue screen behind them. Uh, I, poor Applejack saying that, yeah, try not to ruin the delusion, come on. Try to keep the illusion, good ya? This next part is horrifying, even though they're grapes, or whatever they are. Yeah, eyeballs, ooh, scary. There is something with me and eyeballs that I found absolutely terrifying. Yeah, and then you get um hanging eyeballs, and after that scene... Here comes the real scare. Yeah, this is where the this is where the episode gets awesome. Mm-hmm. This is where the Something... episode turns into a Sam Raimi movie. <laughs> yeah, the shadow comes. Shadow comes, and uh, Applejack is the first one to be startled. Yeah, and then like you got floating ghosts, not pony ghosts, but human kind of ghosts. Ooh. Well, yeah, they totally look human. I mean, oh yeah, I mean they're superhuman. So very human. Okay, I guess they kind of have hands. 
<laughs> yeah, ooh. Well, that means they're Lyra ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lyra, Lyra's dreams died when Equestria Girls came out. Yeah. Uh, Not for Lyra. Uh, oh, but, then, but anywho, then uh, to the under to the underground. Oh, didn't we mention Princess Derpy? Yep, we, we did. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. Derp, That's just Derpy's cute. best princess. Derpy's best princess. That was all. Awesome. Uh, after Big Macintosh. Uh, you know, th- this is just a joke I have in my head. But earlier when when uh, Fluttershy was talking to Big Mac and Granny Smith on the background were Pac-Man ghosts on the side of buildings. Oh. I mean, they are actual. <laughs> so here we have a maze. They're being <laughs> chased by ghosts. And yet, not there's not one shot overhead of the maze as they're running, uh, just from the ghosts. And I thought, well, that would have spoiled the fear element, but it also would have been funny as can be. When they're running, yeah, Rarity trips on her tail, on her on her mermaid costume, and yeah, I like that. It's like she's like, oh, so Fluttershy happened to have a point after all. Oh dear, I, I love that Spike is the one that goes to her rescue. What a gentleman. Oh, yeah. Oh, he'll, he'll always be her, her supporter. Lightning. Yeah. And suddenly everyone falls into the hole in the ground, which is mysteriously covered by something heavy and big. Yeah. Like a, like a rock or something. It's like, oh, great. Now you're in the well. Now you're going to find the girl with the black hair. <laughs> oh God. Seven days. And then like Twilight goes to Applejack and says, What's going on? What are What's we supposed to go? On? Where are we supposed to go now? And Applejack is like, no, I don't know. This wasn't part of the maze. And oh, wait a minute, there's Granny Smith. Ah, oh, the, everything is fine. You see, she's okay. I never watched Psycho, by the way. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> Granny. This is all part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kid show, making a reference to Alfred Hitchcock. I love it. I love it. This is awesome. All right, but I'm going to introduce a question that what may try to spoil the fun. Oh, boo. Mm-hmm. When you go to a haunted house, isn't there, or a corn maze, isn't there the expectation that while it might startle you, deep down you know nothing there is supposed to hurt you? This is implying genuine fear of attack. I'm going to bring something up when we reach that point, but as for now, the main five here, they're relying on Applejack because, well, this is her project, this is her maze, and, well, they're all thinking that, hey, this is part of the fun, so let's just run and be scared. And once things go crazy with the spider web well, and... Th- uh, no, be- be- before that, before that, no, don't, don't rush through it because there is a great moment here where Applejack literally has no idea of what's going on and Spike is like, oh my god, don't you know what's going on? And she's like, no, I don't, but... Maybe this is planned by Granny Smith and Big Mac. Maybe this is all all part of it. And they happen to hear Granny Smith and Big Mac doing the shtick with the eyeballs and all that. The, subs- the following phase that Applejack makes is just... It's, I, I love it. I absolutely adore I don't know what it is about scared ponies, but they are so fun. Funny well, and adorable. She is the cowardly lion as well. <laughs> yeah, he's great. <laughs> Well, honestly speaking, like, that scene itself, like, that faces, Applejack can't lie. <laughs> she ain't no liar, yo. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and they, they, they get chased by the creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm-hmm. Like, li- li- straight up, the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> and, oh, just, <laughs> and Pinkie Pie trying to run. Like, oh, running with roller skates. And Spike is again the one that comes to, to her rescue. So this really is Spike's best episode this season. Yay! So far, he's been more proactive and more supportive and more likable than he was in Princess Spike or any of the other episodes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And well, they, they end up is... they end up falling into she loves Slayer or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I I just love how the creature from the Black Lagoon chases them and got stuck on the spider web. Like, oh, the tension. Like, oh, that's just awesome and. Well, going to an opening where it leads up to, well, above the corn maze to another section of the, uh, te- what you call this? The place or whatever it is called. The, well, before, we, before we get too far, I do want to point out one thing that it, Twilight had to teleport the group out of the web. Mm-hmm. And some people might ask, oh, well, why didn't you do that right away? And this reinforces my thought that uh, magic is 
is tied to your mental and emotional state. We've never really tackled this directly. Back in Princess Twilight, you know, the season four premiere, she was having trouble using her magic, couldn't teleport in moments of extreme uh, pressure, and she couldn't fly right. I think if you mess with an alicorn's head, they become less capable magically. Yeah, I, I I say if you mess with any magic user uh, ahead, they do become less reliable and they do become less um, uh, use useful with like with, with their with their magic power. I mean, it's it, it's directly related to their brain. The horn is connected to their brain. If we're going to talk about biology, yeah, bringing biology on a TV show for little kids, we definitely have no life. But I've always thought that magic has always been a moment of concentration and. It's always been that way. Why do people question it? Like, yeah, it's I mean, always been that way, right? No, the, so, the, if you say that your mind, that your, uh, your, uh, that your mind, your brain is also a muscle, it's not a muscle, it's an organ, it's an organ, but the, you need to use it, you need to learn how to concentrate on all that in situations of, of high stress. Besides, I don't think they would have been able to see the web anyway. They didn't see it until they got stuck in it. But that's besides the point. Like what Silver said that people kind of, why, why don't you just tell about the whole group in the first place? I mean, isn't it like they're in a stressful situation? They're scared. They're, oh, no, scared. I need to do something. Think, think, think. Oh, teleportation. Yes, let's do it. I think part of it is that some simpler acts of magic, like levitation, they do almost without thinking about it. Uh But... More complex magic. We, it hasn't really driven the point home that it requires uh, concentration, energy, and focus, which Twilight will say when, oh, this is a really hard spell, I need to focus. But in combat situations, she's firing off magic blasts at changelings like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I mean, I never, I never once asked why she couldn't do something with magic. Like, I've always, I always know that she's, well, if it's simple spells as levitation, she can do it. If teleportation, if she's not under a lot of stress, she can do it. And if there's a stressful situation, like a big giant minotaur attacking you, you try and do something. Either way, it's it's just interesting. People tend to assume that alicorns are auto god mod. Ha ha ha. No, they are as as fragile as other characters. Yeah, but getting back to the episode. Um, once the main five goes out to the open hill, we are greeted by a very shadowy figure that's hanging. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry. And, and laughing a lot like Nightmare Moon. <laughs> I got over excited uh, when this happened. Oh, wow. And oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, what? oh, wow. Someone take over, please. It's Flutterbat. We get the return of Flutterbat again. That's easy. Actually, you know, we did skip over when Rarity offered a, a vampire fruit bat costume. Fluttershy actually looked kind of pleased with the idea. Yeah, she wasn't <laughs> against it, which was weird. I was like, oh wow, she's actually not saying no. The the face that she makes when when Rarity holds the vampire uh, uh, vampire fruit bat costume in front of Fluttershy's face, that was. Jerry in surprise and kind of like, hmm, I'm pondering if I should actually wear this. Mm-hmm. That and was with, really cool. <laughs> and would Big Mac check me out if I did? Yeah, there you, I'll ship it still. Uh, but yeah. He does like his apples. Flutterbat returns again, kinda, twice now. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny that this is Fluttershy apparently thinks very fondly of that memory. I mean, she He's becomes a, not against it. Yeah. She becomes it in a dream state. She becomes it for Halloween. You gotta ask, oh, you know, maybe, maybe a part that they have done nothing with the implication that she still has a little vampire fruit bat in her. Okay, that was meant as a Halloween episode. It's not meant to be taken seriously, I think, but yeah. it, it, it's there in the back of our minds, at least. Yeah, true, true. Here's the thing. The whole scene is awesome. She comes, she flies down, she rips through. Spike's costume and being really I, menacing. I do I, remember I, that. I do remember that Mike Mike Bogle, uh, who's mm-hmm. one of the, his, he used to be the vice president of Hasbro before he mm-hmm. before he stepped down, and I think he's now trying to write episodes for both the show and the comics. Oh, okay. uh, he said that he wanted to have Bam, uh, Flutterbat back because he really liked that design and he wanted the character to to make a comeback. Uh, maybe 
in terms of story, you guys are right. Maybe Fluttershy feels really comfortable with that bumper fruit, that part of her. Mm -hmm. Although I will call par party foul tearing the head off your friend's costume. He'll, he'll, yeah, I know. He'll, he'll stitch it back on, but really? Well, would you have preferred to tear the, the to tear the head of Spike out? No, but, but, no. <laughs> it's, like, it's just overall you just don't do that to a person's costume, man. Like no. Like Spike has had a, he has his best episode in months, and then he dies for it. Oh, <laughs> but no, he went out on a high note. <laughs> he did. Yeah, no, no, but honestly right. speaking, like honestly speaking, after Butter Bat flies down, rips the costume, and see the genuinely scared faces of her friends, yeah. where she <laughs> knew that oh, love, I lo took this too far. Love that we could, I could talk forever uh, on the different faces, and I love the fact that Rarity is hugging Spike. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. Twi I'm torn between Twilight and Rainbow for scared faces. Yeah, my my favorite is Applejack. Look at that. Yeah, like... Her mouth is making an S. It's absolutely terrifying. Really, I, yeah. I like Twilight is biting her lip and contorting the, the ends down. That is just... Yep, and also Pinkie Pie is pretty on the same boat with Twilight. And Rarity is in the verge of tears. She's already crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. love yeah, but still, mm. but still, this is this is the revelation. This is the moment where Fluttershy took it too far, and I have to say that I feel it. I feel it. Like this is the moment where she took it too far. Well, it, well, the, the fight thing is to her friends that she didn't take it too far. I mean, they're not angry. They're actually immensely Happy impressed. Yeah. But, yeah, but the thing is, the, the thing is, even though the friends say that, oh. We we enjoyed it. Like, wow, that's awesome. But think about it. Like, you, their faces that in that moment they were ju they were genuinely scared. They they got no idea this could be the end of them. Even though they face so oh, many different horrors of the week that tries to kill them, and they successfully win over them. But in that moment, there, like, oh my god, they were genuinely scared, and Fluttershy felt really bad about it. Well, and I, you know, I, I'm actually like Fluttershy. I would feel terrible if I genuinely scared my friends like that, even if they were mm -hmm. cool with it. Oh yeah. And this is and, something. Oh, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Finish, finish, and then it will continue. Well, this is we're back to Fluttershy's fear. She's first. She was afraid of letting them down as a host. Now she's afraid she's failing them as a friend. Uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of scary. Her everyday fears trump any satisfaction of a mock scare. But the thing is here, where I think that we Fluttershy here is, okay, if the situation was, okay, if they knew they were running into a haunted mansion or whatever it is, it's like all prescripted, all planned. I think Fluttershy wouldn't have minded that much because, hey, you knew you were going to be scared by who you don't know, but you're going to be scared. So have fun. In this situation here, they weren't in on the joke. They weren't in on the scare. They didn't know. For all they know is they could have died there. So that's why Fluttershy felt bad. Well, I'm not sure if they could have died or anything, but shocked and scared and the idea of having another terrible monster coming after them from the cave is just mm. that, yeah, it's like too much, too much. doesn't matter how many mm. times that you have fence against evil overlords. You don't expect something like this to happen in Nightmare Night. You're there to have fun. Suddenly you're getting terrified of something that you don't understand. Like, mm -hmm. she, she's back. She came back. and Oh, God, what are we going to do now? Oh, no, we're dead. We're dead. <laughs> uh, this is the part that I was talking about when the episode started, the, whole, the, the moral that I take from this episode. Uh, I'm not sure about you guys. Over in the US, but I'm pretty sure you might have had a couple of incidents where a Halloween joke went way too far. Oh, and all the time. When, yes, and I love this episode for what it's telling. Is that it's basically telling you, yeah, it's fine to scare your friends as long as you are not actually hurting them. Like, don't take a joke way too far before you are, you actually regret it. Because, oh uh, yeah, I mean. Over here, some some jokes, not just Halloween, but n normal regular jokes, they have costed the lives of some people. True that. So you have to be careful with how you are pranking somebody. Don't don't make them that upset. And I think that exaggerating their their terrified facial expressions that drives the point home further. Because I, I mean, I find it enjoyable when they are being scared 
out of their wits. I think it's a, it's absolute it's an absolute joy, especially with how little trust, uh, how little hope they were having on Fluttershy. But it's also telling kids don't scare your friends to the point of making them cry, or to mm-hmm. the point of really upsetting them. That but, is uh, really important. That is something that is really useful, especially with Halloween around the corner. True that. I mean, the lesson here is you guys should know when to tone it down because you might not know. Because if you scare someone to the point of no return, they might turn into a banshee and try to eat you. Ah, yes. Norman. Yes, that's a very ah, important lesson for us all. Don't encourage yes. him, Silver. God damn oh, it. Uh, Come on. By I'm, the way, I'm the, guy who, I'm the guy who said that fame and popularity turn you into a demon seahorse that wants to destroy everyone. Well, that only happened way. once. I mean, oh, wait, what? no, nothing happened. Uh, by the way, that reference was Until Dawn. Go play that game. That game is scary good. Oh, God. No, that's a game that makes you want to kill the main characters. It's like, <laughs> forget about getting everyone al- out alive. You want to see the all dead ending. <laughs> uh, oh, but, then, but anyway, back to the show. <laughs> Fluttershy. Fluttershy is so apologetic. She is so ashamed. That she's hurt everyone. And we get to see all the, the, the creatures. And why have the, um, why is that the town not taken further, util- why have they utilized Fluttershy's connection with the animals? Look at what she accomplished in one night. If they put her to task on projects using her animal friends, my god, she's a new economy boost. Oh, yeah, true that. Oh, true you that. know that, she's the beast master and she's awesome at this <laughs> now. <laughs> Oh, the one thing I, I laugh at, the birds that were the ghosts, mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're praising all these animals that have, are making return appearances. Where's the bird that that Twilight squeezed in winter wrap-up? Just to say, uh. I'm back for you! <laughs> <laughs> tweet, tweet, mother bucker! <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, well, I, I'm guessing there. Like, yeah, look, look, there's a red bird over there. Yeah, it's one of there's them. There's a bird yeah. there. It's one of them. I, I thought it Wait. was purple. You know what? Thinking about it, a bird in winter doesn't make sense. You know, no, no it's cartoon. No, it's coming back on winter. Never mind. Don't worry. Kids cartoon. Spring Kids cartoon. Yeah, but still. Talking about this one. Yeah, no, it's like, no, we're talking about all the different animals that have helpers. That they, it comes back from the beginning of the episode. Like we have the spider, we have the bear, we have the the birds, and of course Angel, the bunny, is uh Dracula. <laughs> That's because he I, sucks. I, <laughs> I cannot wait for my sister to watch this episode because I'm pretty sure she's gonna like Angel as Dracula. Yeah. My sister has a love hate relationship with with Angel. She doesn't know if she <laughs> likes Angel or she hates Angel. Well, well, welcome to the club. But then we get probably the best characterization for Fluttershy in a while. She decides that she doesn't want to scare ponies. I mean, even though everyone wants her to do this again next year, she feels awful. And there's that sense of self that this is something she's not comfortable with and she doesn't have to compromise that for her friends. And they respect that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's this, good. this is not my cup of tea. I don't feel like doing this, but I didn't try. I, I didn't knock it until I tried it. I tried it. Doesn't like, I don't like it. I'm knocking it. That's, that's awesome. And that's a great message in a show that tends to favor the extroversion. You have to have friends. You have to get out. This is saying, no, there are times where if you're more comfortable being by yourself or by uh just, you know, enjoying your own style, don't compromise that. And that's mm-hmm. such a great message. That was one of my criticisms of uh, Amending Fences, this strong, oh, you must go out and make as many friends as possible. This is a nice counterbalance to that. And with that, after Fluttershy says, "Yeah, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this. Maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll get used to it some other time. But nah, this is not my cup of tea." She goes back home and hides under the bed. Yeah, I'll just has a comfortable get together with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven friends. But the spider's not there. I th- oh, the spider's sleeping. Maybe He's the probably- spider's sleeping. He's building a web in the corners. Like you know, this is my place too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And still, uh, there's your episode for this week. And that's the Halloween episode for this season. And after not having one episode uh, of this nature uh, ever since, like, season two. Oh, by the way, Angel Bunny finally got his carrots. He has one. Yay. He, he <laughs> has, has one next to him. Well, he yeah. finally 
He gets what he wants, though, but he please leave Fluttershy alone. Don't leave Fluttershy alone. <laughs> leave Fluttershy alone. Leave her alone. She's a cute little pony. Ah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so final thoughts, guys. Final thoughts. Wonderful episode. Love Fluttershy's characterization. Love the visuals, the expressions, the jokes, the references. Uh, it's one of the it's one of the most fun episodes this season. As for me, I highly enjoyed this episode from the Easter eggs to the costumes to all the funny bits in between. I, I just love seeing the whole scenario. I, I just, there's, there's something about Nightmare Nights or Halloween that makes me gleeful with joy because of everything that's happening. Like, I, I just love to see the costumes, like all those hidden Easter eggs in the background that you just need to catch. Like we mentioned before, like the Sailor Moon ponies and Gem the Hologram ponies or Princess Derpy, some stuff and like that. I mean, just all those things, that's just so cool to spot. And the story and the moral and the faces, they're just awesome. I think this episode is... A uh, worthy successor to Luna Eclipse for I mean, when it comes to Nightmare Night episodes, it definitely has. Uh, it complements it really well. It goes great with the other Fluttershy episode, which is uh, uh, the Stairmaster. Well, they they rhyme. They kind of go in like the same category. A uh, kind of like creepy, scary uh, tone with Fluttershy as the as the protagonist. Uh, love the characterization of Spike, which I didn't feel, I didn't realize until I reviewed the episode with you guys that. Spike comes off as such a likable, such a good, supportive, nice character that you actually want to see more of. It's like, can we get more of this Spike, please? Less of the uh, douchey Spike. <laughs> yes, no. Less, okay. less of the punching bag. Yeah, mm-hmm. less punchy, mm-hmm. less punchy bag. More supportive, please. And love the costumes, love the creativity and imagination, and I love that final segment, which is uh, it. Actually, you know why? It got to a point where it actually caught me off guard. I really didn't know where it was going until they announced where they were going. <laughs> and it was it was a gleefully surprising episode. Thank you, iTunes, for uh, derping <laughs> and giving us this Halloween treat so early. Mm-hmm. Like, more than a month early. <laughs> yeah. and Somebody's going say... to get murdered at Apple, I swear. <laughs> and then people are like, oh, don't watch it, you'll ruin the experience on Halloween. Oh, nuts to you, I watch Halloween movies all through the month. Dude, yeah. Yes, so am I. I have a bunch <coughs> of horror movies right here with me. I have, I have <laughs> Paranorman, Coraline, and the Mothman prophecies right here sitting next to me. <laughs> but still, but still, that that's this week's. Well, that's the Halloween episode. We we kind of jump a few episodes ahead to cover this one, but well, there was no. Next, other, yeah. yeah, true. But starting next week, we'll. Be on our way to a normal regular schedule. Yeah, we we should go back to review the rest of the episodes in season four. I mean season five. That that means we're gonna go to episode fifteen, uh, Rarity Investigates, written by everybody in the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it has like five different writers this episode, so we're gonna be definitely talking about that one. Uh, but that will be uh, that will be another story for another time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, have a wonderful Halloween. Don't eat too much candy and watch a lot of horror movies. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week. Why do we, Silver? Why are you going to dress us for Halloween? Well, you know, I thought I'd just go all natural. Oh, God. No. Nice. Where's my camera? I'm going to take some pictures. No, <laughs> th- th- then I can be dressed up as a prison inmate. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't intend to bribe you with this. These are for personal use. Uh, oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well, if that's the case, I might as well dress up a silver quill and take over his channel. <laughs> yes, let's see how long, let's see how long you can keep the deception up. Uh, what about you, James? Uh, no, I'm just gonna be here in my house. I'm gonna pull a flutter shy. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be in my house watching horror movies and not going out. Besides, Halloween is not that big in Spain anyway, so I think we're going to be fine. Uh, true that, true that. But anyway, you guys listening to this, have a happy Halloween and be safe. Like, always think about your safety first because we care about you and we want you to come back and listen to us talk about Pony episodes. If a guy with a hockey mask comes to your house, don't let him in. <laughs> don't be an idiot. 
And don't hide in the closet. That's what he wants. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And don't run into the chainsaw-ridden sh- uh, woody shack. Unless you have a tricycle in front of you. Uh, also, don't try to start the car when the scary music is playing. It will not start at all. And don't split up. Yeah, never split up. Also, watch Cabin in the Woods. That's a very good movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> what else can we say? What, what, what other tropes can we talk about? Oh, oh, I think all we can say is... See you later, everybody. <laughs> Sayonara, bye-bye. Brains. You know what? I think that doesn't gel well with the Halloween atmosphere. Don't you have a screaming sound in your soundbox? <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> Nothing Let's but try. professionals in this show, everybody. Let's try one more. <laughs> nah, I like the burp better. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We can say that that was one of the brides of Dracula that died after being burped by someone who just ate some garlic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs>